John Klein Van Damme is the only dude that punches and flex. Ah! And you just looking at the muscle. You're not even looking at the move. Hi, my name is Uri Hall. I'm a UFC fighter. My background is boxing, kickboxing, Kyokushin Kai Karate. I know wrestling and jujitsu. Today, we're gonna to be looking at mixed martial arts scenes in movies and TVs and judging how real they really are. He's throwing wild punches in the beginning. Uh, that's not really a smart thing to do. It leaves yourself open. Of course, the big guy would just capitalize on it. If I'm fighting someone that's bigger than me, movement is always gonna be important because you know, for them to chase me is gonna take them out of their element. I recommend speed on a person that's bigger than me. Any type of straight technique down the pipe because straight technique is always gonna be faster than round techniques. Body shots will slow anybody down. I think of it like a tree. If I can chop them down at the root, then I can, Finish him up up top. With a guillotine that I know, you can either get him in here, sometimes you can get the person's neck underneath here and just kind of use your hips. It's more of a hip position. He had him against the octagon, so it's kind of hard to get your hips up as someone's pressing into you, so it leaves you to focus more on your hands. So that looks like a pretty realistic position. Yeah. I'm looking for a way out. He's way too small to pull off that move. If someone has your neck here, that's the natural defense to kind of put your hand over. So naturally what you have to do is go lower to let the person roll underneath you, but it's hard to pick the person up. So the ground stuff looks pretty good. A little dramatic. If he's turning around to get that arm bar, he's stepping around like that, that's too much space. That person could just rip their arm out easily. Because in grappling, you gotta stay tight, very close, you know? There's no, none of this. The thing that I notice a lot with mixed martial arts or martial arts film, they want that big dramatic effect. Oh my God, this is happening. So that's a really good knee bar. I mean, it's it's very deep. He's got both legs around. He's got the person's leg close to his head. That's perfect. It's dramatic how he's putting his hand all the way behind him. That's just taking way too much energy. All you gotta do is just close your hand and press your hip forward. I would definitely give this a eight out of 10. I think it's a great introduction towards MMA and a great story as well. I love this. What he's doing right now, he's throwing that big right hand, you know, and he's throwing that right hand as well. He slips under. That's one of the most coolest thing you can do to grab someone to submit them. The person is choking you with their arm on one side and you're choking yourself with your arm on one side right here. So if you get your arm here, that's gonna close my arteries a little bit, right? And then no blood's gonna go to the brain and then I'm gonna pass out. That's totally accurate, believe it or not. So he has a triangle leg lock. And if he has the arm, he would just have to kind of put it in the middle and press his hips up. And then you'll have like an arm bar from there. Or if the person turns into you, you can transition to a triangle. But that is just great control on the bottom. If I can get my legs around you like that, then I'm controlling you. So a lot of people think, you know, if you're on top all the time, you have an advantage. But, you know, if I can use my legs to kind of pull you in and control you, push and pull, right? If I'm pushing your arm here, I'm pulling you in under your armpit. I'm pushing your hips away. I'm pulling you with my arm. And if I can get my legs around your, your waist here, I can pull you in. Now, normally if someone's on top, you know, you can strike. But from here, we notice that he has his leg locked. So now I have one arm free. I can't really do much. I can punch, but the person on the bottom is so far away, it's hard to hit them. This is textbook. This is perfect. If anyone double legs you, that's a natural defense. When someone grabs into your legs, their head is gonna be exposed. Now granted, when you do attack someone, your head should be up a little bit, right? And that will make it a little harder, but even then, you're still at risk. So I think what Aaron did right away, he just locked in the guillotine and locked the arm in, and you notice he locked his leg. So now it's even harder 
for this guy to get out. I mean, this is just perfect. This this blows me away. This is 10 out of 10. I need to watch this. I really love John Kong Van Damme. He's definitely one of the guys, if not the guy, to inspire me to kick. Cause you know, I'm a kicker. I knocked out guys with spinning kicks. I've learned other cool kicks. When I was 12, this was life. Round kick's one of my favorite kicks. That was pretty accurate. There's so many ways to do round kicks. If you're using the shin part of your leg, I would recommend it to you to chop the, the leg or you know hit him in the body. You can hit him in the face, a little harder to use shin. Hell no, this will never work. Nobody should ever stand there and get kicked with the same kick. Put your hands up, champ. And in a real fight, I would definitely be throwing a lot of low kicks. As a fighter, I think more like a sniper. I'm the guy that waits and I look for that perfect shot and I take it. And I'm very precise with it. I contribute that to my karate background because in karate, we had to do tornado kicks and kick apples off each other's heads. So that's the type of accuracy I had to have. And it kind of helped me throughout the rest of my career. John Klein Van Damme is the only dude that punches and flex. Ah! And you just looking at the muscle. You're not even looking at the move. That's where I got that kick from. The spinning hook kick. Uh, so many ways to do this kick. What John Klein Van Damme just did right there is an extension of his leg. The further that leg is out, you know, the more whip it's gonna have the stronger it's gonna be. When I did this kick to knock out my opponent on the Ultimate Fighter, I chambered my leg. So I spun, but instead of extending it, I keep it intact. Now that was because of the distance, because if he's close and I extend my leg, it's gonna create that off balance. But in that split of a second, you have to recognize that distance. Oh. I've been attempting that kick for years. Still haven't gotten it. You gotta be able to have a good split to do that because what happened is when you extend that leg, you're using the other leg as momentum to generate that power. Not as realistic as it seemed because it's so much energy to generate that. It takes time to throw it. And in that time, that person could have a defense mechanism to go, I'm out of here. A lot of people don't train this area on your leg. You know, it's that soft meat, your calf, or even right below your ankle. It's like hitting with a bat. So I absolutely think leg kicks can win a fight. It's a great movie, but it's not even close. So I'm gonna give it a five. Sorry, bro. Still love you. As you see, Keanu is just evading. And that's one of the key things too. If someone's either sporadic or wild or they're just throwing, it's good to kind of evade. I was taught a long time ago, you could never fight with rage. It just blinds you. I've done it once in my career, it cost me. And I can say that plays a part in her, just attack, attack, attack. There's the opening and he blocked and defended it. He grabbed the hold of her and gave her a judo throw. It's genius where someone keeps coming at you, you just use their momentum to throw them. Yeah, he's holding her back, but she could have easily kicked them, throw some knees. She has her legs. She wasn't really using that. There's no pause in a real fight like that. I, I wouldn't be like, you okay? You know, you grab it, you break. But other than that, you know, this, this was just phenomenal. Credit to Keanu for doing all of his stunts. I would give it a 10 out of 10. There's some definitely some funny moments. <laughs> and as a dynamic striker, one of the key things I always look for is how to perfect your technique. And any type of swinging motions like this is usually an act of desperation or usually I'm out of my element, but we'll give it to him because dramatic effect. Dirty boxing is, is more than that. It's not just punching and my head is in your face. I'm pushing you. It's uncomfortable. It's just so uncomfortable that you just want it to stop. You can't breathe. You can't, you can't fight the way you want to fight. A very, very genius uh, move. But if you don't know how to get out of dirty boxing, then you fall victim. Definitely not a proud favorite here. Oh, oh. 
when homeboy fell, no one just falls and hold their legs. If you fall in MMA longer for more than two or three seconds, that is considered almost like a knockout. If I have a hurt leg, I'm not gonna show you I have a hurt leg. I'm probably gonna kick you with that hurt leg because the moment my opponent recognized that, he's gonna exploit it. Granted, I think what this movie is, is some underground fighting. So there's no rule to apply. But in the real UFC, a ref will see that. Shots! into trouble! I love the jujitsu part on the floor. I love how they were just back and forth because that's jujitsu. You're back, you're forward. One move doesn't work, you go to the next. You create chain moves from how they were doing transitions to one move to the next. Shows that they have an idea of what's going on. I think he's turning into a Uma Pilata. Another common move, it, it's so hard to get out of, you know, it's one of those moves where you're stuck and if you don't really know how to get out of it, you, you can get hurt. So for me, I'm not the best grappler in the world. So I, if I get there, I know how to get out and how to maneuver myself to get back to my strong suits. What I would naturally try to do is roll over. If you notice, the person is going to stop you automatically from rolling over. And this is just one of those positions where it's a stalemate, where it's like, all right, who's going to impose the will to either keep the person down or get out? Step shoulder. I notice he finished him at the end. I'm a strong person. If someone gets me in a Uma Pilata, uh, I don't see someone finishing me by pressing down so hard, it'll pull my shoulder out. I'm speaking for myself. I would give this a nine out of 10. The jujitsu part here was really well done, I think. Well, I'm a big fan of Michael Jai White. I actually learned a kick from Michael Jai White. He has what, seven black belts? So that guy's actually legit. So fighting is like dancing and it's about rhythm. And right now these guys are feeling each other's rhythm. Each opponent has the counter for that move. He throws a technique, he blocks, he hit back, he counters, he goes back, and it's just such a beautiful piece to see. Like this, I love. To me, this is fighting. This is getting in the zone. This won't last for long, of course, because eventually someone will break their rhythm. Whether it's fear, whether it's none of my stuff is working, whether it's this person better than me, or rather than whether them getting clipped. <laughs> So what we're seeing right now is him getting kind of a, a cross choke from behind. If his body was more attached to Michael Jai White, it would have been a little stronger, but his upper body's more here, so he's not latched on properly. So that helps Michael Jai White gets out of that move a little easier. I love this whole, my hand is up, I kick you low and I come back high. I do it all the time. I don't do a back fist, I more do a jab, but this is Michael Jai White we're talking about. Faking is one of my best traits to use as I'm competing because it interrupts. I can create that opening, and if I create that opening, then I can exploit my opponent's weakness. And once I get you to react, then I can counter you properly. Now this is what fighting should look like almost, almost. I think that it's uh, similar to what I do with the prettiness of the art of fighting, the dynamic way of striking, but it is too crisp and pretty. There's not gonna be too many standing in one spot. There's gonna be a lot more movement involved in a real situation, you know, there's gonna be creating more openings, more grabbing the leg, a little, a little bit of dirty boxing-ish to kinda create that mixture of mixed martial arts, but it's, it just looks too clean. The only way I can see something like this working is because of the size difference. So putting that leg up, that opponent is feeling that weight distribution and he just rolls. But it depends how you roll though. And if you roll backwards, then you're rolling out of the move. So it's great for TV, but I wouldn't think a move like this will really work in real life. I would give this a nine out of 10. It's right there, but it's, just not that, it's not gonna be that pretty, pretty much. <laughs> oh my God. This is so awkward. Now I gotta judge myself. Way to go, guys. Good job.
Yeah, this was a cool uh, scene, man. I got to work with one of the best. But I think from what I've learned from acting is that a lot of times when you throw those punches that way, it's not just straight to your face. Depending on the camera angle, it's gonna look uh, very good for TV. But for the untrained eye, it's like, wow. But for the rest of the OG, it's like, what? Stance is everything. My stance is another line of my defense. You know, am I open enough where I can protect the, vul the four vulnerable areas, such as like my head, my neck, my, uh, my solar plexus, and my groin? And it makes a straight line. That 45 degree angle, most of the time you see, is protecting that. Right now, we're kind of feeling each other's rhythm. Man, I love this part right here. Well, not when I died, but. Went out like a G. I mean, you would have to be very accurate to, to kick someone like that because your kicks are naturally heavier than your arms. Plus my chin is a little closer, so it's protecting that. But for this scene, you know, uh, he didn't kick me in the neck. We actually took his shoe <laughs> and someone put their fist and put it at my neck to make it look like a kick. Movies, man, movies. All right, I gotta be, I gotta keep it real with myself. Um, again, it goes back to that too clean, right? If it's gonna be more scuffle, like the part where he grabbed me, and you know I was throwing some knees, it's gonna be a little more realistic like that. So I'm gonna give myself a nine out of ten. <laughs> Using the environment in close quarters like that, just tossing each other, bouncing off of it. I feel like this is a real fight. When someone grabs your throat, what a lot of people don't realize is that you're stronger up here, but as you go down, you're weaker. So your wrist is naturally weak. So anything that involves me putting pressure on this will alleviate that pressure. Instinctively grabbing something to hit that person, I feel that works very well. using the place, using the uh, curtains, using anything they can find. So I rated 10 out of 10 because it's the closest thing to a realistic fight on the street or in a house. Jesse's got the timing down, now can she control right here? This, red flags. You don't wanna turn away, of course. You turn away, you're giving up your back, and you get rear naked choke. Just like we saw from the other cartoon, you want your legs wrapped around a person. So what I'm supposed to do is push my hips back bring my knee in, and then try to wrap my leg around the person. But she has one knee up, which means it's hard for the persons to cross over. So that's a natural defense. Side control position, looking to get to the mount. She's there, she's there in the mount. So if you're in that position, you never wanna step over. You remember what I said about grappling being like this? If she steps over, that creates space. And if anyone sees that on the bottom, they're gonna push and get their leg wrapped you wanna slide your knee across their stomach like this. So my knee is gonna be crossing over to get the mount position. It's a lot easier for the person on top to cover the person on the bottom mouth. The person on top have more ways to move their head than the person on the bottom. But what I think she's trying to do is posture her up. If I can push you away a little bit, then I can create space, but this is risky because the moment I do that, I set myself up for an arm bar. You get caught here, it's a finish. You're going night-night. This is, if not the hardest thing to get out of. What happened is when you put a weird naked choke in, think of it like a snake, you kind of snake around the neck. If I can get the crease of this part of my arm right in the middle here, then I'm locked in. What I like to do when I put this through, I grab my own shoulder like this. Now I'm locked in. I think Hallie did a great job. She snuck her arm in and she got the other arm in like this and all she had to do was squeeze and basically you're cutting off the, the blood circulation to the head. You know, I think she, Halle Berry did such a great job in uh, performing this MMA. There was some small spatial stuff, but I don't think it's too much of a big deal. I'm gonna probably give it like a, a eight out of a 10. I think my favorite scene would be uh, Black Widow. If you take away the octagon and 
you take away all the rules and stuff, a real scuffle would be like that where they're using the entire environment. That is the closest thing that I've seen to anything being real from a Miss Martial Arts uh, perspective. So, Black Widow. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you like that one too.